QuickBooks Online 2023 Tags. Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file using the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top, switch the view down below. Duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate. Going back to the middle duplicate a tab down to the reports on the left hand side. We want the balance sheet report. Tab into the right then. Reports on the left. This time the P and the L, the profit and loss, the income statement. Closing up the ham boogie, running it for the month of February, because I think we have some space there. 020123 to 022823. Let's run it. Nothing's there. That's what we want, because we want a clean report to put some tags in. Closing up the ham boogie on the middle tab, running it for February again. 020123 uh, to 022823. Run it. Nothing's there. Good first tab. We're now looking at the tags. We want to get into the tags, noting that in some prior presentations, we've been focusing in on some of the tools that basically give another dimension to the normal double entry accounting system, primarily when focused on the income statement, breaking it out by column. Those include first, when we think about them in chronological order, we thought about the jobs, which QuickBooks Online thinks of as the sub customers. We went to the class tracking then, and then we went to the projects, and then we went to the location tracking, and now we're looking at the tags, which I believe is the last thing that happened in chronological order. But if you group these things together in terms of like functionality, you might have two main categories, one being the jobs, or the sub customers, which are the same kind of different names for the same thing, and the projects, which need to be tied to a customer. That means that the income statement will primarily be broken out, not by jobs or sub customer or projects, but by customers, which will then show you the columns of, of the projects or the sub customers. And then you've got classes, location tracking, and now tags, which kind of fall into their own uh, category which will have their own kind of drop down in essence of location uh, classes and tags. Now, the tags of those three are a little bit different from the reporting standpoint side of things. So just a quick recap on, on the differences with the tags versus the classes and the location tracking. When you look at classes and location tracking, usually what you want to see is an income statement that's gonna give you a breakout by column and then add up to the total. So let me show you an example here. If I total this out to uh, 123123 and I break this out say by class, for example, and run this out. Now I've got my, my classes and notice that I have some stuff that's not specified. Normally when I'm using class or location tracking, I want to have every transaction is going to be categorized as some kind of class or location. So if I'm if I have two locations like California and Nevada, for example, I want all my transactions to be classified as either California and Nevada and my total to not have anything in this non classified area. Uh, if I'm breaking out by business versus personal for my business use and my personal use of QuickBooks file or something like that, then I would want all my transactions to be broken out between business and personal, nothing that's not being categorized as a class. When we think about the tags, then we might use the tags for a few different reasons. One, 
you might use them in a similar fashion as you use classes or location tracking if you don't have access to classes or location tracking because you're using a version of QuickBooks prior to or cheaper than the Pro, Pro Plus or above, in which case you don't have access to classes or location tracking. So you might use class tracking in a similar fashion or two, you've already used classes and location tracking and you don't want to add another column up top in classes and location tracking, but rather you want to be able to run another report on a profit loss in essence for another item, right? Another, another thing. And so you're going to use tags possibly in that situation, or you have a situation where you have access to class tracking and location tracking, but you have some things that you would like to tag where you're not going to try to tag like you don't need to have a tag for every transaction, but you have certain things that you want to be tagging. So for example, if I if I had a certain advertising campaign and I wanted to try to tag the revenue that is linked to that advertising campaign and the costs related to that advertising campaign, in that case, I'm not trying to tie out every transaction to some advertising campaign because it, it would be impossible to do that possibly. But in the event that I can tag the revenue and the expenses that tie out to a particular advertising campaign, I can tag those items and possibly run an income statement that's just for those tagged items. So that's why you, you might use the tags for to kind of put in an income statement to kind of uh, pick up some items, but not have a situation like you would for locations where you would want to make sure that every transaction is applied to one location or the other. So that's the general idea. You do have access to tags, I believe, even if you have a payment scale below the QuickBooks Pro Plus. So so let's take a look at where the tags are, are located here. So if I go up top and we see the tags are in the lists, you'll typically see the tags down here. You could go to the all lists up top. And this is another way that you can get into your tags. So I can go to my tags this way and you get your summary. Another way you can get to the tags is go to the banking field on the left hand side and then the tags. Now also note that when you're adding tags to a transaction, if I was to go to a new button up top and say I want an invoice, for example, just to see where the tags are located, there's usually this tags field right here. Now that tax field, even if you're not using tags, doesn't really get in the way much to me. But if you don't want that tax field here because you're not using it at all and you want to make your, your invoice as clean as possible, you can turn the tags off so you don't see that field. And you could do that by going to the cog up top. You go into the account and settings on the left and then the sales on the left hand side. And then uh, within the sales, we've got the sales form content and then you've got your tags down here so you could toggle the tags off if you're not if you're not using the tags but i'm going to close this back out we're going to keep the tags on for us here we're in the tags field so when you're creating the tags usually the tags are kind of set up so that you have uh, groups of tags so we have a common example down here that we set up in some prior presentations where basically uh, we added a tag group, which we said sales rep for California. And then we added uh, another tags group. And then we can add basically the sales rep. And the sales rep is kind of a common uh, usage scenario to be, to be using the tags with. So you can add a tag for uh, the sales item. And then we can, we got our sorting capacity then that we have for uh, the sales, the sales uh, group and then the individuals within the group. Uh, so let's let's set up a scenario as though, since we we saw this uh, in a prior presentation, as though we're going to use the tags in a similar way that we would use the classes for a business versus the personal use of a QuickBooks file. If we don't have access to the classes and we're trying to break out an income statement for the business use, possibly to create like a Schedule C for a small sole proprietor type of business. 
So I would like to set up a system where I'm going to have a tag for everything, either business or personal, so I can check the stuff that is untagged and make sure I didn't kind of miss anything that might be able to be an expense or something that possibly could be deducted for taxes. So I'm going to go up top and say, let's say new and let's make a group. And I'm just going to say this is going to be business and personal in the tag group. And let's just put it another color. Let's make this red and then I'm going to save it. And then within that group, let's add some tags. And I'm just going to say one is going to be B for business. And then I'll add the tag and then P for personal, adding the tag. They're both red because they're going to be applied to that group. So I'll say, okay. So now we've got within here, uh, the business and personal B for business P for personal. I'm going to try to have every transaction that I make either have business or personal, you know, tagged on it now. So let's say we record some income and expenses. So if I go back on over here and make an invoice, for example, and let's just make a new customer, uh, eh, new customer, customer, customer number 10, <laughs> generic customer number 10. All right. So we're going to tab through this. I'm going to say this is in February 0201 two, three, and I'm not worried about the locations. I'm going to make sure to assign a tag to everything. And if it's going to be revenue, it's going to be business. If I'm invoicing typically, because the only personal revenue I might have would be for my like W2 revenue or something like that, which I would put on the personal side. So I'm going to say that uh, the product, let's say that we just have hours here and we're going to say that it was a thousand dollars, the good old thousand dollars. And then you could have uh, multiple line items here. Notice that I, I can't assign a tag to multiple different line items, which is similar kind of to the location tracking and does add kind of an, a complication to like our model here, because I might have some expenses, for example, that I might need to be allocating out between multiple line items. However, Oftentimes when you're doing this kind of scenario, breaking out business versus personal, the stuff that you need to allocate between business and personal uh, is, is stuff that's going to be more complicated for taxes anyways, like your utility bill. You might have a home office and you would like to break it out between business and personal. Well, for taxes, you're still going to have to do a separate schedule typically to kind of break that out. So it might not be a, a big issue, but remember the tags are similar to the location tracking in that we, we're not assigning it line item by line item, but we're assigning by transaction. So we can we could we can do an hours, and I could say eh, let's just keep it with hours, a thousand dollars. We'll save it, and if I go to my uh, balance sheet, so now we've got the accounts receivable reflected here. Now notice I don't on the drop down when I break this out on the drop down. I don't always have the tags on the drop down. You would think it would be similar to classes and location tracking, classes, location, but you don't often have the tags capacity. But if you run the reports from the tags area, then, then you, sometimes the reports look a little bit different. So that's a little bit weird with the tags. If I run the reports on the income statement and I hit the drop down here, I've got the location. I've got the classes and then I've got these two, which I believe are tags that I made in prior presentations. I'm going to refresh the screen. And now I do see the tags down here for the business and personal on the tags. So I can run that if, if for whatever reason, you don't see the tags showing up over here, then you might just run the reports from the tags area. This is something that's been a little, they've kind of. I think they're improving it as they run the reports. If you run the report from the tags area over here and then run the reports, you get a similar profit and loss, you know, by tag, which should match out. And you can see it's basically the same report now as the income statement. Now this should tie out to our total uh, for the profit and loss because we put a tag, we're gonna try to put a tag basically uh, to everything so that it's going to tie out to our total profit and loss. So if I go back on over here, we've got our, our profit and loss uh, by tag, and that looks good. So let's go back on over and add another one. 
and let's say we put some expenses in place here and we'll hit the plus button and let's say we have some expenses so expenses and let's say this is going to be let's do another vendor vendor three vendor three and okay so we're going to pay someone in february and then again the tags are up top so i can't really assign it to to a line item by line item but i'm going to buy something that's purely for business and so let's say that we're going to say this is going to be supplies, business supplies for $600. And it's going to be going to that tag. This is going to decrease the checking account. And the other side is going to be an expense and it's going to be applied to the tag of business. So I'll say, let's save and new. If I check that out on the balance sheet, there it is on the balance sheet and notice on the balance sheet, they just don't give me the tag option at all over here. But on the income statement, we have that tag option. So we'll just say it's still business. I don't have any personal stuff uh, at the moment. So I'm gonna go back on over and then let's do a personal one. So I'm gonna say expenses to vendor three. Uh, this time I'm gonna delete the, the business and do the personal. It's in the same group, but now it's just the personal item. All right, that's all I want. Get out of there. And then this is going to go to utilities. Let's do utilities this time. Utilities. Boom. And this is going to be for 300. And so this is going to decrease the checking account. The other side going to utilities and to the column of personal for the tags. And let's save and close it this time. Profit and loss running by that tag group. And notice what it does here. Uh, it put it into the business tag supplies. Oh yeah, there it is. Utilities. So it breaks it out. Notice what it doesn't do for you. It doesn't give you that total, the total column over here, which is kind of what we like to see in when I do a profit and loss uh, by, by class or by location, I'd like to see every item broken out business or personal and then the total. But we can, we can double check it fairly easily by saying, okay, let me just look at the totals and see if that ties out to my income statement by total here. And I can also look at the unclassified, the ones that don't have a tag uh, and see if I have anything in there. So for example, if I don't assign something a tag, let's try that out. I'm going to say plus button and let's say we make an expense and it's going to go to vendor number three. And this time I forgot to add a tag and I want to add a tag to, to each transaction. How could I figure that out? So I'm going to say, let's say this went to this went to what I wanted to go to miscellaneous <laughs> miscellaneous and I'll make it uh, an expense account and other other business expense boom and this is going to be for $170 let's say save and close that and if I go to my profit and loss and and run the profit and loss it's still, it's not showing up even in that ungrouped area. So notice in order to, to see the fact that I didn't categorize something, I could say, okay, let me look at my business and personal. And I have, I have supplies and utilities, but, and I could like total this up and see my total and compare that to my profit and loss that has that has, um, that's just my totals right here. And I would see a difference of the miscellaneous 170. So notice that that's a little bit more tedious of a, of a system than if I could just use the classes, because what I would like to see is business personal, and then it total up over here. And if there's anything that wasn't assigned a class, 
I would like it to to then show me the unassigned items. But uh, when I'm using tags, I can't do that. I think when, when we go down here and we look at these ungrouped tags, these are the ones that I assigned a tag that aren't included in a group, right? But tags are a little bit different oftentimes when you're using them because you could apply two tags. Like it's possible for me to go over here uh, and add a transaction where I apply two, two tags to the one transaction. I could do business and, you know, you know, something else within the tag. So, so notice it won't let me do business and, uh, and personal in the same group, which is kind of nice because then that means that it, it won't allow you to, to double count within that group. So that's kind of nice, but you could still kind of use it in the same way uh, as you would with the classes to kind of try to break out business and per personal, but you have to do a little bit more work to double check that you've assigned everything to a tag. And you could do that by again, go into the tag here. We could say business and personal, and then I could export this to Excel and just add up the two columns to give me my total column over on the right hand side and then compare that, compare my net income, my total net income to what is on an income statement that's that's just my total income statement. And then try to, you know, drill down and determine which transactions I didn't add a tag to and then drill down and basically add the transactions that, that have not been tagged. Okay, so now the other interesting thing with the tags is that sometimes your filtering options are a little bit different as well. So you can see over here, they put they put the tags on the income statement, which is great because I can see the tags over here, but you would think that if I go into the custom the, the customize area and the filters down here, that I would then be able to see the tags to filter by because I could filter by location, I can filter by class. Why can't I filter by the tags? You would think uh, that, that that would be here, but no. But if you generate the report from the tags reports, so if I go over here and close this back out, uh, do you wanna leave without saving? I'm gonna say yes. And I generate my report here. So here's my transactions that are with the tags. If I run the report this way, I basically come to the same profit and loss report. You can see it is in essence the same because if I hit the drop down. It's got the same kind of options over here for the most part. And then if I go to my customize up top and my filters, then I've got my tags shows up in the filtering option. So that's a little wonky. I don't know exactly why that is when you run a normal, because again, if I run my profit and loss over here, you know, I get to, and I, and I filter this by, I filter this by my tags, run it. I get basically the same report. It's basically the same thing here. And then I customize it and filter and look at my filtering options. I don't get my, I don't get my tag filters. So that's a little bit of a wonky thing. I don't know, you know, but it's, it's not really a, an issue. It could be frustrating, but once you see that you can run this report over here and then you can go in and customize and uh, further filter by the tags so that I can go into my tags and further filter on the, the business or personal. So I could say business and filter down and then it filters down that way. Now, if you're using the tags in conjunction with other things, so for example, if you, if you were, if, if these transactions, you're using tags in conjunction with the classes and the location tracking, you can go into a report like this in the tags and further filter down by the classes. So for example, if I go into the customize up top and go into my filtering down here, I can further filter by classes. So if I assigned a, a class or a location, possibly I, I assigned a location to California or Nevada or something like that. And I wanted to look at, maybe I'm using my, my tags for sales reps then I can filter down my tags to, you know, California or, or Nevada. But the other common thing that you would think that you would want to do is to run the profit and loss by say class, if you're using classes and then filter by the tags. 
And note that normally you would think to do that by running a normal profit and loss over here. I've changed the dates so that I can see some of the classes that we've done in the past. And then I've sorted this by classes instead of tags. And then you would think you might want to filter by the tags. So I've got it by class and then you could customize up top, but there's no tags field here. However, if I go to this report over here where I generated the report, let's go back. I generated from our tags group, any of the tags groups, right? I just generated a report from the tags group and now it's sorted by the group of, of tags. And it's and if I hit the drop down and display by column, but now I change it to the classes, then I'm basically in the same situation as I was before. Let's, let's change the range, go up to 12, 3, 1, 2, 3. So we've got the same net income now sorted by classes instead of tags. But instead of, instead of it being a profit and loss report, now it's a profit and loss by tag uh, group, even though it's not by tag group anymore because I made it by classes. But if I go into the customize up top and I look at my filtering options, now the classes are there and I can further filter down or the tags are there. So I can further filter down by tags and I could choose like business. Now we didn't assign a class to it, but you could see how that's a little bit different. So you could, you can use uh, the filtering options, but you gotta be a little bit careful of how the filters work because if you generate the reports from the tag group reports, you come up with similar kind of functionality of the profit and loss and you could run a profit and loss by class, but then you might have more filtering options to be able to filter by the tags. Okay, I'm gonna run that report again, just to take a look at the example that we did. Remember our, our example is that we're using a cheaper version, so we don't, have we don't have access to the classes and we wanna use tags to break out between business and personal. So for example here, if I run this report and let's change the date range to the end of February 02, 2823, you'll notice our issue was that I had business and personal. I would like to have that non-classified column over here to see if there's anything that I didn't put a tag on to double check that I've, I've tagged everything and therefore that my, all of my, my income statement, especially for the business is correct. So I possibly can use that for taxes, for example. Uh, so, so notice what we could do then is if I generate the report this way, I could then say, let's run the report by total now. And then I'm going to run the report and then I'm going to filter it by the things that are not specified. Cause now I have my custom field up top and I can filter it by tags now. And I want to filter it by the things that I didn't assign a tag to the ones that are not specified. So not specified. I could run that and there's that miscellaneous item. So this is similar to if I ran the income statement uh, with a with a with a with a with a classes to the non specified column that I can now drill down on and say, oh, I didn't assign a class to that one. So I'm going to go into that one and see if I can drill down on it and say, well, that one should have been business, right? So then I could say that one needs to have a tag up here for business. Boom, save and close it. And so now everything has been specified between business and personal. So you can, you can use it in a similar fashion that way, which is, which is kind of neat. So now I've got it broken out, everything business versus personal, and I've got a little income statement for my business side of things. And then the personal is broken out to the side. If I added those two up, I would have my total for income and personal, which I can see by just looking at my total up top, just looking at the total this way. And if I wanted to see if anything was not specified, if my net income here doesn't tie out to the net income of adding these two up for the business and personal this way, and it doesn't because my date range is, let's change the date range. Well, let's keep the date range. I could say it doesn't tie out. Well, then I can go to this one and I can say, let's customize and filter by tags and look at all the transactions that were not specified. And then I can, and then I'd have to go in here to each of these transactions and specify them, assign them to business or personal. So that actually works, you know, fair, fairly, fairly well. 
uh, to to break it out. But the other reason you might want to use tags is for those those kind of things where you're not trying to have the full group tie out. So for example, if I go back on over and I was look at if if you're looking at something like like advertising campaigns and you're trying to tie out the cost of the advertising campaign to the revenue that it's going to be leads that it's going to be generating, then you're not going to have a situation where every advertising campaign is going to be is going to be tied out to your total sales line because you're just going to be because you're just going to you're just going to have tags that are signed where they're applicable they might not be assigned to every sales item uh so so that's another place where the tags could be used so just as a as a bottom line the tags are similar to the to the to the uh classes and the location tracking however uh if you're in a situation where you want a profit and loss that sh that's going to have every transaction assigned a class or location those are usually better tools because they give you that non-specified area and the total on the right hand side although you can see that there is a workaround to do a similar kind of thing with the tags if you needed to which you might if you don't have access to the classes or the location tracking because you're in a, a tier down on the level of the, of the payment level and you can use the tags in a similar fashion which is pretty cool and then again you can use the tags if you've already used up the classes and location tracking and if you're trying to assign tags to certain things where you don't want all the tag group to tie out to the total but you're just tagging certain things so that you can write an income statement and remember there's a difference in functionality at least at this point in time if you run the report from the tags uh, you might have more filtering options than if you run just a normal profit and loss report. Also, the tags are pretty much limited to the profit and loss report, whereas the groups and the, cla the classes and locations have some balance sheet functionality, although all of them are more focused kind of on the, on the performance or income statement reports.